So we've covered the basics of universal story language, examined each step up close, and explained how each symbol represents its phase or moment in a visual way. But there's actually a secret to USL that makes it more powerful than traditional models, and it has to do with how its steps are connected. So in this lesson, we're going to look at USL as a whole and discover how this model harnesses the power of symmetry to make sure your story is perfectly balanced. This video is a lesson from a full free mega course on our website. If you're ready to supercharge your storytelling, click the link in the description and start your journey today. This video is also part of a series, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, there are links down below. If there's one thing we love as humans, it's symmetry. You can dive into this more, but we tend to view symmetrical faces as more attractive, symmetrical designs as more balanced, and most of the things we buy are built symmetrically. I mean, look at the world. Most animals and plants are symmetrical, and believe it or not, there's a simple reason for this. Actually, we don't know if there is. We're, we're not biologists and we're not psychologists, so we don't know exactly why humans love symmetry so much. But one reason may just be that we like order. And symmetrical objects are more orderly to our brains and easier to understand. Whatever the reason, it's clear we like it. So shouldn't our stories reflect that? As we built universal story language, we quickly realized there were bits of symmetry inherent in storytelling already. The midpoint usually splits the story down the middle. The three acts are usually a symmetrical quarter, half, quarter, and many phases reflect their mirrored counterpart. So we set out to capture this symmetry in our storytelling model. And using this knowledge, you can create a more balanced story, understand why certain phases and moments reflect one another, and imbue a deeper meaning into your storytelling by having your story reflect itself. Let's start with the beginning and the end. The setup and the aftermath are the only two phases outside of the main plot. They are both used to highlight aspects of the protag and the protag's world. And we'll understand the scope of the protag's growth through the differences of the setup and the aftermath. They also often take place in the same location, helping to highlight these differences. Next, the catalyst and story climax are mirrored because they are deeply connected. The catalyst implies the story climax, since when we hear the catalyst, we should have a clear idea of what the story climax entails. Also, the plot starts in the catalyst and ends in the story climax. The hesitation and the final plan can often share common elements. One of these is the gathering of supplies or allies. In both, it's common to show the protag preparing for something, though what they're preparing for is quite different. The outer gateway and the inner gateway are both moments that separate the acts. They are also both clear decisions made by the protag surrounding the goal. The outer gateway shows a clear commitment, and the inner gateway shows a clear recommitment. They also both showcase a major change. There is a major external change in the outer gateway, and a major internal change in the inner gateway. The only phases that aren't directly mirrored are the testing and the rock bottom, except for that they both commonly contain a montage, though for very different reasons. Next, the moment of danger and moment of peril are all about the antag, or whatever the protag is up against. The moment of danger usually shows us a glimpse of the antag, which foreshadows the attack on the protag in the moment of peril. They are both negative moments and derive from the idea of pinch points, which help add conflict to your story. And lastly, the uphill climb and downhill fall are mirrored because the uphill climb shows a series of successes, while the downhill fall shows a series of failures. They both point in a clear direction, whether up or down, and are often some of the longest phases in your story. On top of the moments and phases mirroring each other, there are also two mirrored sections. The catalyst hesitation outer gateway and the moment of peril rock bottom inner gateway. In both of these triads, the first moment is something that happens to the protag, the next phase is the protag's reaction, and the final moment is the protag making a decision in an active way. In other words, a very similar structure happens right before each act break. An impactful moment, a reaction, and a commitment or recommitment to the goal. If you are a structure nerd like us, then you probably understand just how powerful a symmetrical model can be in designing your story. It's cleaner, helps you remember it more easily, makes your story more balanced, and allows you to create mirrored moments. For example, why not set your moment of danger and moment of peril in the same location? Why not feature the same sequence in the setup and the aftermath? 
Why not mirror the preparations and the hesitation and the final plan? This opens up a whole new level of creativity that you can bring to your story, which can help add a ton of meaning and depth. Okay, enough nerding out about structure, let's get back to the course. To finish things off, now that we have a good grasp of each of the 15 steps, we're going to revisit our example from the beginning of this course in more depth to really see USL in action. But if you want to go a little deeper into the symmetry of storytelling, the extended version of this lesson covers an example of each of the mirrored moments we just mentioned to show you how the experts pull this symmetry off.